Hi, so we're here. We're studying for the Yonkers Firefighters Exam. I'm with my lovely students here. Um, and as I was saying to you, I'm actually, I keep scouring the, uh, the internet to make sure I'm not missing something. Um, and basically one of the things that I found interesting was um, it said to go to look through the test fast, like to cover the things that you know. You're new. What's your name? In the back. Edward. Hi, Edward. So this is the first time you're in this class? In this class, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm Danielle. And, I, and um, I'm speaking. They've been here before. So if you have any questions or I just fly over something like I know you know it, just let me know. All right. Okay. Um, is this the first time that you've been to all these classes? Oh, I've been to everyone, just a different class each time. Oh, okay. Okay, so if I'm the worst, just kind of, all right. And you can leave whatever you want. You don't have to ask. You can go to the bathroom, just, okay? All right. Um, so one of the things that I found interesting was um, it says to go through, and I keep telling you this, go through the ones that you know. Um, try to do all of those first, okay? So I, I don't know if you guys keep hearing me say this. Um, don't get hung up on the ones that you don't know, okay? Because you're gonna start to get anxious and it actually says it here. It says, um, when you answer the question instantly, don't waste any extra time lingering on the question. And I remember, I don't remember who it was, but uh, I think it might have been you when you were sitting here one time maybe, you answered the question and you went back and you changed the answer. Might have been, yeah. So, so basically, um, if you, you're you not sure of an answer or you answer a question and you know this the answer, move on. Don't go back to the question because your answer the first time you do the right answer. So um, again, it said go through it fast. Again, eliminate obvious answers. You guys keep hearing me say this. I'm going to keep saying it so you don't want to hear it anymore. Skip the tough ones. Um, Cross out the ones. Are you guys doing that? You're crossing out the ones you know aren't the answer. Are you really doing it? Yeah. You didn't do it. You didn't do it? No, Okay. All right. So cross out the ones that you know aren't the answer. It's important. So if you guys are taking, let's say, I don't remember, what do we say, set? let's say it's 75 choices. It's anywhere from this to this number of choices. For that amount of time, you're getting one chance of taking this test, right? Just do it, okay? It's a great job, I keep saying this. Just do it, all right? If, if you know something, I'm gonna say it again, do it, move on cross out the obvious because if there's four choices and you cross out the two, you only have two to look at. It sounds really stupid, but it is a test taking strategy. And it is something that we teach kids starting as young as like third grade, second and third grade. So for that, like I said, for that time, just do it, okay? Um, Guessing. So I told you this too, your gut, go with your gut. If you look at it and you, you just don't know, you just you take, you take a random guess, right? Don't leave anything blank. But if there's something saying, okay, I'm gonna take this guess, go with it. Don't go back and change it, go with your one, your first guess. Unless you go and you read it, like we were going through some of the questions, um, which we're gonna go into it last time, I think it was Thursday or Friday, and we said, oh, we think it's this. Was it the, um, did we go through the one with the, the firemen going up? The, it was in one of these things where the. Um, it was a really hard one. It was a really, was a really the hard one with, yeah, the, with the shoot. Yeah, the two right? foot on. And it was like between two of them, and it was just a matter of the numbers. Did we do that one? Yeah, the one oh, with the elevator shaft in. Right? No, it was the one. Um, it was about, yeah, it was about um, how much like fire like, things spend, right? How much they spend. Well, there was that one, yeah, there and was the that one. Like one. The, um, that was the unadjusted the shaft loss. Extended, yeah. they're about, about the elevator shaft. It was the elevator shaft. Did you do any of the, the reading count? 
No, not Ian Macbeth. Did you do any of the reading comp book? Yeah. Yeah, so there was one. It was uh, on page 33. We had, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Do you have all the books? Uh, I don't. You don't? Okay, so these are the, these are the two books. This is one of the other books. I'm okay. sorry, I'm trying to stay away from you guys. No, it's all good. Um, yeah, it was on page 33, and I think it's question number eight, and it was literally between two answers um, because of the numbers. So everyone had this long discussion about um, which was right, and it basically, someone went with their first answer, and they wound up being wrong, but we had to go back and look back and go into the story, and so that was like one of the only times where the first answer was wrong. Okay. Um, so is this the first time you're in yes. any of the classes? Yeah, I was doing a different class, but I'm doing some tutorials. A different class with a different teacher? No, like a different separate private class thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we were just going over. Um, they've heard me. They, they probably don't want to hear me anymore. But just basically, some of the things that you do when you're taking a test, um, well, any any multiple choice test, but especially when you're when you're there the day of, um, we're figuring. We, no one has seen the tests, and I'm sorry you have to hear this again. Um, no one has seen the test for any test, and um, we're figuring. We're going to say 75 questions because we don't actually know. So that's a, that's an average. Um, and I'm, I'm begging you, I'm imploring that you cross out the obvious answers. You're only going to have that one time to take it. Okay, so as we go through some of these multiple choice things, um, I'm going to ask you to practice it today. Again, because you only have that one day to take the test. Right? Um, again, these guys know I've been a teacher in Yonkers for 22 years, and I've been teaching the ELA test for 22 years. I've seen a lot of mistakes. Okay, so um, I forgot your name in the back. Edward. Edward. I thought it was that. So um, I also told these guys too I have brain surgery and I forget, like totally quickly. So yeah. don't take any offense if I forget your name. Okay, all over the room. Um, so I also, for practice, um, um, that was the teacher. You could just put it on the front. Yeah. Do you need all that? Because there's I a do, schedule. I do have this. Okay. Do you have a black marker? Yep. Reason. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okie dokie. All right. Uh, thank God you're not making me nervous. The sweat is dripping down my back. I hope you got that on tape. Like, I can't. He's videotaping this. Are you okay with that? Sweating. I can't even tell you. And I love that you're getting from behind, too. Cross out, obvious. To, um, what was the other thing I said? Let's see who it was. Yeah. Well, I mean, you and then just stick with your good. Why? Because usually the first answer. Thank you. I'm going to underline this so you don't sue me. I 
Even in past classes? Something I, I read, want. Read the question before we read the text. Yay. This is different from what the book says. So the book will tell you not to do this. Okay, I'm telling you that this is what we teach, and I teachers in other districts do this. So I don't want to say on camera, but I'll tell you later um, why. Know what you're Not for. you. Because then you know what you're looking for. That's it. Louder. Because then you know what you're looking for. Yeah, so read the questions first so then you know what you're looking for in the passage. And then what are you doing in the questions? Underlining the key and the factors. You said key something. Like keywords, key factors. Keywords, yep. Yeah. Okay, so you do that. We're gonna, we're gonna practice all this, okay? You underline keywords in the question so you know what we're looking for. Then when you go back, right? I'm only gonna do four. What do we do after you do this? So again, I, I take it back. We know how many questions there are, so you can kind of figure out how much you have for each question. And you're gonna spend the most time on the reading comprehension, okay? Um, that's a fact. All right. Uh, so after this, I, um, you're going. To, I'm going to give you the answer to this. You're going to underline after you read. You're going to underline as you're reading. It will save you time when you're answering the questions. I don't know if you guys have noticed because they've been with me. You're reading, and then when you go back and look, you already know where you're looking. Does that help? Does it help you at all when you underline? Yeah. Does it really? You want to? Nothing. Can you say it louder so our yes, newbies can hear you? Does. Okay. So you're going to underline. you have this again I thought it was five hours so here I am telling you guys like oh take your time take your time hey how are you um, so now you want to preserve your time towards for, towards the end okay so I am going to give you one of the things that I printed and then we're going to go into the book Did your brother give you the uh, thing I sent? Uh, yeah, I, oh, okay, he did. Thank you, I appreciate it. No worries. Do you have a pen at the bar by any chance or a pencil? Yes. I forgot one in my car. Right here. Thank you, I appreciate that. There's a, uh, this wasn't there too. Thank you. So this isn't in the book, this is, I think it's just for you guys. Newton and LeBron James. Okay. So for anyone that's watching the video, anyone that's watching the video, um, this is a packet that was made. It's the same as anything you were maybe reading in the book. We're going to read the questions first, and then we're going to go back into the passage and underline. Anybody want to read one of the questions from me? 
Anybody want a highlighter? I have highlighters. Yeah. You're welcome. Based on this information, LeBron James jumping is an example of which part of Newton's third law? No, that's okay. Thank you for reading. So what's important? Obviously, we have to highlight. The whole bottom line. Yeah, and um, we, this, this sentence from the passage, right? What part is important? I'm asking you now because you, what part is important? What? In number three, LeBron James. Oh. Uh, LeBron James jump in, in the example of which part of Newton's third law? Fabulous. LeBron James jumping is an example of which part of Newton's third law? Number four. The force created when the floor pushes LeBron James upward is equal to which force? What's important? The whole thing. Pretty much the whole thing, right? Yeah, we're going to look for the whole thing. So you think it's better to do every question then go? Instead of uh, going and then back and um, I think it's better to do all the questions, and then when you go into the pat, you'll see when you go into the, the reading. I don't know if the readings are going to be long or if they're going to be short, and then do it. Um, so I actually printed you both. I printed short ones, and then I have this is just a longer one. So um, I say read them all because then when you go through. You're going to go through and you're going to underline. Um, and are you going to remember what every question says? Absolutely not, because you can't remember that much information. But still, um, when you start to go through the questions, your, your memory will get jogged as you're reading. So I just think it's, um, that's honestly, that's how, that's how we teach it. OK? So number five is what's the main idea of the passage you're looking for? Main idea. Yep. Whoever phone is dinging, can you just silence it? Only because if it's dinging day of, you're going to be uh, disqualified. Read the following passage from paragraph from the passage. LeBron James is a big man. He is six feet eight inches tall. He weighs 245 pounds. When he is standing upright with his arms raised above his head, his reach extends to eight feet, 10 and a quarter inches. How can the tone of the author best be described in this paragraph? So what are we looking for? Tone, yeah. 
component of the author. And then number seven, choose the answer that best completes the sentence below. LeBron James has an impressive vertical leap of 44 inches. Michael Jordan holds the record with a vertical leap of 48 inches. So which word do you think would go? Would it be in contrast, for example, although, initially? And they want the word that would go at the beginning of the sentence. So that's not back in the paragraph. That's, you just choose what you think would fit. Okay, you guys ready? Should I time you guys again? You don't want to sweat? You sure? I timed them and he actually started physically sweating. Do you want me to time you guys and see how long all of you take to actually read? I'll just see how long you guys take. So you're going to read and you're going to, it doesn't matter if it's what the question says, you're going to underline what you think is important. You okay? You reading? Uh, yeah. Okay. How you guys doing? Yeah. You okay? Yeah, just fine. So you're at about six minutes, 40 seconds. No. So would you, are you still on, you have your thing? Are you still on this one? No, this is the, um, oh, this one. Isaac Newton? Oh, yeah. Um, could you put the uh, paragraphs without the answers? For the answers, can you put the paragraphs that you found the answers in? Would you just write the number? Now I'm being a jerk. And you don't have to do number eight. I saw you did it. I'm sorry, you know, just have to do the multiple choice. Sorry about that. But for those of you that finish, just let just let me know what time you fit just tell me you're finished. I'll, t I'll give you your time. And then um, if you could put the paragraph number after I after I give you your time. You guys keep working, but um, I just want you, we're about at about, keep going, you still working, right about 15 minutes. So average, you guys just, if it's 60 questions, you have three hours. I don't think the passages are going to be this long. I can't do both. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> If you finished, and I want you to see if you can find the paragraph where you found your answer. Whose question? Um, everyone. Some of them, you may have just had the answer. If you're answering the question for the first time, you don't have to go back and do it. And if you need to number your paragraphs to make it easier, just you know, number them. <coughs> Say one, two, three, four. And there's a reason why I'm making you do this. I'm not just doing it as busy work. I'll explain that.
You don't have to do the um, cat ever. You don't have to do the written one. Just multiple choice. Because uh, there's going to be only multiple choice on the test. Okay. You finished? Okay. So the, um, the reason why I had you guys uh, look for where you found the, pack, the answers is because um, if you do one at home or if you're looking at it, you're not understanding where the answer is, um, going back and looking forces you to find the answer. It's not, like I said, it's not just busy work. Um, if you number the paragraph, right, um, and if you underline again, you'll see why you're making that, the mistake that you're making. And some, sometimes it's just a hard question. It's an inference, which again, I've explained. And again, I have easy inference questions and inferences when you're making a guess at something that, um, um, lost my train of thought. So basically, an inference is when they give you information and you have to guess at what they're saying. They're not giving you the exact facts. So um, for the guys that were here, can you give me do you remember what I said about an inference? Inferred. Inferred, yeah. But what does it mean? <laughs> so that's a hypothesis. Yep. So basically, inferring is uh, I had said something, and this oh, is the, the best I can come up with. Go ahead. Inferring is like uh, trying to guess what they're trying to tell you without telling it to you. Yes. So if I were to say, like, uh, looks like it's, you know, it's a little cloudy, you know, clouds, clouds are getting darker, the wind's starting to blow, what's going to happen? It's probably going to rain. Yeah. So that's, you're inferring that it's going to rain. Doesn't mean it's definitely going to happen, but it means you're using the information to say, it's almost like a hypothesis of the hypothesis in science. So um, they're giving you the information, and um, you have to make a guess from that. Right, but you probably will get inference questions on the test. Okay, so was, do you guys think this was hard? Was it more interesting than the other things? I try to find something that you'd be interested in. Um, so let's go to the question. You guys have the answers? Yeah, check it. How'd you do? I got one more. One more? Okay. Did you guys check your answers? How'd you do? I got one more. One wrong? Which was the one that you guys got wrong? Six. Three, because of the wording. Yeah, I got three wrong. Three wrong? Two. Okay. I got three wrong. So we have two, we have three, we have six. Any other ones? I made a mistake. My, I thought it was six. There's only three that I got wrong. I got four wrong. Four? So we're going to just go through all them. Okay. So. All right. So number one, it's just a factual question. Um, what is Sir Isaac Newton's third law of motion? For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Yeah, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Do you guys know where that is? Where can so I find second that? Paragraph. Second paragraph. It says uh, Newton's law of motion. Second uh, sentence. It reads, "For every action, it's right there." Okay. Number two. What does the author describe in the passage? D. D. Uh, who, who got that one wrong? Do you know why? No, I don't know why. I picked, uh, actually picked C for the three laws. And I was just going to pick So let me, do you know why you got it wrong? Yeah. Was, was the whole thing about how he came up with the three laws of motion? And it was mostly about the third law. I just, for some reason, it's just it was the all three of them, for some reason. Okay. So, um, do you understand why it's more about LeBron James? Yeah. Does that make sense? Does everyone understand why it's D and it's not any of the other questions? Did anyone else put anything else? He's on, like, every other group. Is that a, what happened? I'm sorry? He asked a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I going too fast? You sure? Stop. Slow me down or stop me. Okay. Are you with me? Yeah. Did you get number two? I did. Okay. Um, so, number three, LeBron James jumping is an example of which part of Newton's third law? It's 
see, but I got B. I got B too. The word yeah. 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 I can understand why it's B. So again, if you cross, if you cross the same out, ones word they are. They're worded different. So, so we know it's not A. Does that make sense that it's not A? Yeah. And do we know it's not D? Yeah, I, don't, this, I, I did it all quick except for this one. I got like obsessed with uh, read the following sentence from the passage, and then I actually had to go back to the first page. Which one is that? Uh, the third paragraph. Wait, which one is read the following sentence? Three. Oh, three. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Sorry, the top of the question. Um, I just couldn't find the exact wording. Usually when it says read the following sentence, it's like the exact wording, exact answer. Yeah, so, so that's... I obsessed with it, so I, it wasn't anywhere near where it says to read it, so that's why I... So here, so let's go find where it's almost in. So it is third law. So the second paragraph is where I kind of got it. Equal and opposite. So they, what they basically are they're trying to say is that him jumping and pushing off the floor, the pushing equal back. and up, pu pushing, who said that? Um, you. No, I said it, it pushed him back. That's basically the floor, it. yeah, the, him, him jumping and the floor is pushing him. So that's equal and opposite. Does that make sense? It, it's, it's, the words are so close. This is kind of like the one that I said that we had the, we, with the not we weren't arguing, we were just kind of really discussing. The, the questions are so close to one another, and that's one of the, the things I wrote over there. You see the mess I made on the board, that whole mess, is that um, they want the best answer. So they're gonna, sometimes they're gonna give you two answers that are so close to each other for like, because they wanna make sure that you really understand what you're reading. And this is, this is a, a good example. Just choose the one that you think is the best. So C is the best. But you, do, you see how they're close. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, the force created when the floor pushes LeBron James upward is equal to which force? And I think this is kind of related to three. <coughs> B. B. The force, oh, LeBron Why did you put five? I have no idea. <laughs> what were you thinking of? I must have circled the wrong one. Yeah. You're not going to do that today in the test, though, right? No. I promise. I won't be, be sending you off. Okay. You're not allowed to. You're not supposed to be doing that here. I'm trying not to. Okay. Am I boring you? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Already do like a tap dance or something? <laughs> you don't have right. a camera, No. <laughs> I did not sign up for camera. Just letting you know. I don't know how I got this job. I'm not going to see. Huh? I don't know how I can see. Okay. Everyone understands why it's B? Yes. Yes? Good. Okay. The force created when the... Oh, no, it's four. Main idea? D. D. D? Did I hear someone say B? No, A, C. Yeah. Okay. Um, how can the tone of the author best be described for number six? Someone had a question on this one. Who had a question on this one? Did you say angry? No, I said B. Oh, I just said B. No. Does everyone understand why it's factual? Yes. He's giving you facts. He's a big man, six foot eight inches, just throwing facts at you. Make sense? Yes. Okay, good. Seven. All those. Yeah. Seven. Yeah, they're doing a comparison. LeBron is this. Michael says. Is that why you have 23 on your arms? No, nah, so no. Nah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Um, what does in contrast mean? In contrast is when, um, like, I'm saying, well, you have light hair and you have dark. In contrast, you have light hair and he has dark hair. So it's a, you're in contrast of one another. Or you have blue eyes, you have dark eyes. In contrast of one okay. another. Harrison. Yeah, it's it's a comparison, but it's the opposite of each other. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions on this? So the reason why I wanted to show you a long one 
and I, I said, you know, let's time you this way, is to show you the time that it will take you if you have a long one, not to make you guys nervous. But um, if, you, if you go back and um, if you're not underlining or you, um, whatever, it's harder to find the information, okay? If you have a longer one, um, some of the other skills that we teach is to number your paragraphs. Okay, so that you know where to go back. I don't know that you're really going to have longer ones because everything that I keep seeing is short. But um, did we do the thing with the with the math with the easy? We did, right? With the easy thing at the end. So at the end of three hours, you're going to be tired. Okay, so maybe at the end of tonight, I'll I'll give you an easy task to do, and you'll see how tired you are. You're going to mess it up. All right, and I'm trying to show you these things not to make you nervous, but I want you to just kind of conserve your energy so that we're not making silly mistakes, like today, okay? Because um, I'm, I'm gonna tell you the way I keep telling these guys, you guys are all very bright. You're not coming in here and, and you know, you don't know anything that you're doing, but you, you have to really conserve your energy for the end. Like what is it, track, track runners do that? Yeah. Like they sprint right at the end, right? Something like that? What? So, um, reading count? Does anybody need to get warm, take a walk? Okay. I don't want you falling asleep on me because you're on camera. I'm on camera and I know, I know that you're falling asleep. So, we're going to do 34, page 34. And this is a short one. What do you do if you see a word that's too hard? Underline it. Or? Oh yeah, cross it. Circle it, yeah. If it doesn't make, it doesn't affect the sentence, don't worry about it. And what is your name? Sean. Oh, uh, Sean. You know the Sean. Yeah. Yeah, sentence is short. Um, Sorry. Oh, now that's okay. Call me Chris. No, 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 that's okay. <laughs> no, he's a, he's a nice show. Um, okay, are we all on 34, 35? Yes. Edward, you with us? Yeah. Okay. So we're looking at, now you're getting into fire stuff here. I don't know if this is stuff that you need to kind of follow along with. Shorter passage. These are getting harder. These are getting harder. So, um, According to the preceding paragraphs on page 35, number 8, in an emergency, a firefighter should break the lock of the cylinder enclosure whenever the shutoff valve. What am I underlining or highlighting? Or firefighter should break the lock of the cylinder enclosure whenever the shutoff valve. Yeah, so a firefighter should break the lock of the cylinder enclosure when something happens. Everyone see that? Number nine, according to the, I'm not gonna keep reading that. Shut off valves for liquefied petroleum gas installations. So obviously we have to look for that, right? Shut off valves for liquefied gas installations, which I'm, Imagine you guys know something about, maybe? With me? Number 10, if a cylinder needs to be moved but cannot be because of the severity of exposure, the pressure can be kept under control by? The pressure can be kept under control by? Of what? What are we looking for the pressure of? The, the shutoff valve? What's, what's the earlier? Is, yes, a cylinder. Oh, a cylinder. So let's just highlight that whole thing because it needs to be moved and I don't know anything about a cylinder. Do you guys know what any of this means? So you guys are going to learn this from reading the paragraph, I assume, right? Okay. 
So let's highlight if the cylinder needs to be moved all the way to the end where it says by. Okay? The preceding paragraphs state that the supply line should be disconnected when the Yep, supply line should be disconnected. Okay, number 12. The preceding paragraph state, the shutoff valves for liquefied petroleum gas installations are sometimes placed inside buildings. Thank you. Thank you. Shuttle valves for liquefied petroleum gas installations are sometimes placed inside buildings. So you're looking for why, I assume, right? 13. It's suggested in the preceding paragraphs that during an emergency, the supply line tubing should be flattened to the extent of closure when something happens. The supply line tubing should what? Be flattened to the extent of closure. What is that? When though? Emergency. Oh, during an emergency. During an emergency. Yeah. Um, fire regulations require that liquefied petroleum gas installation should. I'm going to give you my book to say it. This is highlighted. I'm going to give you my book. So fire regulations require that liquefied petroleum gas installations should. Just the whole thing, right? Does anybody know what any of this means? It's kind of all made up. Hmm? It's just, is it kind of like all made up? Here, take Six. this. Yeah, just to do this? So this one, 8 through 14? Yeah. On your Oh, you did it right? Yeah, oh, okay. when I went that other day. Okay. So could you have all the answers. So I have to tell you, um, are there any words or anything here that you don't understand? Because if I had to if I had to look, there's a lot here that I don't understand. So can we read this one together? Or just me shut up and you guys read it? I'll shut up.
Can everyone find nine easily? but I can't it says the answer is B it says it's for B for number 9 for number 11 oh. number 11 well number 9 was yeah, I was going to say number 9 is it right is, it, said, it does say you can move it to a different location but you want to say it took me literally like three reads to find turn to the right always turn to the right it's highlighted. Yeah, I don't remember. I'm not fine, but it's highlighted too. Oh, what? Huh? It's lost I know, lefty loosey ready maybe. Where does it say that you can move to another location? Uh, I see it says about a hammer. It says the supply line should be discounting the sun. Oh, a safe location. But it doesn't say why. Do you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to like make a guess? I guess that's, yeah, it's a safe location. So that, I guess, would be like an, like an inference because another location is not saying safe location, but it is another location. Uh, the safe location would be the first paragraph, though. Because in the first paragraph, they're talking about um, if it's outside, people can tamper with it. Does that make sense? So think about why it can't be closed. That's, it, it says it can't be closed. Oh, did I just give me the answer? Oh, I did, I just gave me the answer. Sorry, I did that wrong. Sorry. I would thought it was the other way around the question. Instead of closing it, they want you to flatten it.
Number eight was pretty easy, right? They should break the cylinder. One. given in the next to last sentence. Um, cylinder needs to be moved but cannot because of the severity of exposure of the pressure to be kept under control by... So did you find... Is that in the passage? Yeah. Okay. What paragraph is it in? Well, is because it's more convenient. I thought 
that it would hide it so that they couldn't break it. Yeah, because sit outside like the control table with it. Right. That's the way I read into that. So did so you got it right? Yeah. I'm so sorry about that. I really am. Let's check over there. Um, thirteen is let me check my answer now. Is C. Shut off valve cannot be closed. Thank you for correcting me. Um, did everyone get that? Thirteen C. Where are they reading? Oh, where is it? Right before the second paragraph, right? It says shut off valve cannot be closed. The supply of gas can be shut off by flattening the supply line tubing. I'm pretty sure that's the. Isn't that the last paragraph? When they say flatten it. With a hammer? Yeah. Page 34, it's like right, toward, right at the bottom. Yeah. If you look right where the 34 is, it says hammer. Yeah. Does that make sense? Did you find it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and then the last one, let me make sure that I'm correct on this, is D, not exceed a certain size. No, it's C. I got C as well. Wait, 14 is C, yes. You guys are all right, and I am absolutely wrong. Have shut off valves. You're all right. You did see an app for the math part called the Socratic app on the iPhone. I don't know if it, it gives uh, math questions. I don't know if it's free, I don't, uh, but I thought it was pretty, I don't know if anybody struggles with any math stuff. I know I do. So I, I just wrote that down on uh, my book. So it's called Socratic. Um, just wanted to put that out for you guys. So um, I'm going back into the math book. Do you have this one? Are you guys awake now? that I did notice on the um, Ohio test was remember that sheet, I'll give you the sheet and I'll give you the sheet as well and um, you weren't here last time either, was remember the sheet I gave you guys with all the um, formulas on it? Yeah. A lot of those formulas were on the test, like converting the feet to yards and, uh, and that stuff. So if you guys can just kind of brush up on some of that stuff, find a find it out there. Um, questions with that? So um, we did, did we do 52 together? Number 52 in the math book on page 24? Oh, anybody need a calculator? Yeah. Okay. So no cell phones, day of test. I'll make you see here if you guys need them. I'm jumping, I'm going to skip around because I know you didn't do, you didn't do any of them, so. Yeah, I did 37. You did up to 37? Yeah. Oh, okay, so we're, we're on 52. Question number? Can I just ask you a question about, oh. can I ask you after or whatever? But no, right now, that's good. About 37. 37 is an instrument store gives 10% discount to all students. Let me see how we did that. Oh, I know how we did it. Work backwards. So some of the questions, so originally I tried, um, did you guys do 37? No. Anybody do 37? Question. Question number 37 on page 20. No? Yeah. Okay. 
So we're all going to look at 37 on page 20. It's an instrument store gives 10% discount to all students off the original cost of an instrument. During a back to school sale, an additional 15% is taken off the discounted price. Julie, a student at the local high school, purchases a flute for $306. How much did it originally cost? So what do you think you do first? I'll tell you what I thought after you come in. Exactly, that's exactly what I thought you'd do first, but it's not, because it's it's 10%, that's exactly what I did first. I did 306 times 0.25, and I didn't get the answer. So now you have a calculator, so you can do it more quickly and see what you get if you do 306 times 0.25. Do you have the answers? So this one, yeah. The correct answer? You know how you got it? Uh, we did last week, no? I think we, I thought we did. I, it says C, what? What, three? Yeah. Three, yeah. Yeah. So basically, you're, you're working backwards, okay? So how I did it was I took my answers and I start, because I, they already have seen some of my math skills, they're pretty poor. So I started with 325, and I multiplied it by, uh, what's point, uh, 10%, it's 0.1, yes? Yeah. So what's 325 times 0.1? 32.5. 32. 32. So it's 32.5, and then, it's not nothing more. Put it to you that way. Okay, so as you guys have the calculator, I don't want to waste your time on showing you the, put it to you this way. As you start doing, you, you do the numbers, multiplying it, it's not going to come out correctly. Okay? So what you do is, then you do, you come down to number three, because 375 isn't going to work out either. Okay? So then you do 400, right? And you take off 10%, which is 0.1. Right? Times, you find out what 10% of 400 is and what does that come out to? 40. 40. So now you have 400, right? And you minus 40. Let me see. Right? 360? Yeah. Okay. So then 360. I find out, um, you find out another uh, 15%. Where do I get, what's 15%? Which 15%. Of what? That's the only number I have. Do 15% of 360. I, I don't have the calculator. I did it differently. I'm just, how did, tell me how you did it, because you're always probably way smarter. I did 400 times 0.9. Where'd you get 0.9? Um, one. So I pretended oh, okay. that that was the whole, I worked back. Yeah. And then once I did that, and then I did that, so I got 360 and then 360 times 0.85. Which would be 15%. Yeah. Right, which is what I was saying. So take the 360. Right, because this is, this is the number you have left, times 0.15, which would be 15%. I don't want to confuse them with the point. So what would that number be? 54. 54, right? Okay, so now this is the next number you're going to take away. So you have 360 minus 54. 306. 306, right? So look at the number in the problem. So I couldn't, sorry, so that's why I got it wrong, I just take 25% off the of work. That's what I did. Yeah. So if, if I come up to problems like that and I just absolutely can't, if I'm not coming up with the answer, I take the answer in the, that they give you, and I just work backwards. Yeah. I'm really not the best mathematician. So um, I get stuck on a lot of word problems, and um, sometimes I use visuals. Sometimes, like at this, last week for one of the questions I had to draw like actual lines and threes and so, 
Okay, so I'll show you. I feel I'll, like I need to be on the text. I'll show you how far I get to, and then I, the, the, the book can't be right. Everyone I've shown it to says it can't be right. So you have y, right? x minus 1 equals z. Okay. So this is the distributive property. You have to distribute y first. So y, you give it out, right? Okay. So you basically, whenever you see a number next to parentheses, you're doing multiplication. Okay? So y times x, they actually write it xy because x comes first in the alphabet. Okay? Equal, uh, minus y. If you put one y, it's fine. It's the same thing. Okay? Equals z. Okay? Now you have an equation to work with, right? So I'm going to erase this. Does everyone understand what I just did? Yes. Okay, you just distributed it. Do you understand? In the back? Sure. Okay, all right. So variables want to be by themselves. I'm going to get rid of this because it's really not supposed to be that. They want to be by themselves. Okay, so what you will have to do is you're trying to get um, this by itself. So the easiest way to get one of the variables by itself is to get rid of the one that's alone. Because this is actually a different number. So you're going to, now that's gone. It just cancels itself out. What you do on this side, you have to do on this side because math is always balanced. What you do on the top, you have to do to the bottom. What you do to the left, you have to do to the right. Does that make sense? Did I lose you? You have like a glazed over look. Me? Yeah, you. I'm figuring it out. So let's say this was a two, right? Let's say this y was a two, and this was a, a two. I'd have to, my, negative two, I'd have to add two to get rid of it. You would add two on the other side. I would have to add the two on the other side. But it's a letter, because we don't know what this, le what this is. That's the difference. Okay? So it just cancels it out. So now we have to do plus y on this side. Follow it? Okay. So now this now goes down and it's xy equals z plus y. Follow me too? Okay. And letter next to a letter, a number next to a letter, whatever, is multiplication. What's the opposite? Division. Division. So what you do on this side, now it cancels itself out. And now, it's like the glaze over, it's, but up here, I'm sorry, wait. So you want to get the x, the x here. So you're going to get rid of the y here. So the y cancels itself out. So x, so what it looks like nicely is x, you're solving for x, x equals z plus y over y. And it's not there. So if you go to the answer key, it's in the answer key, but then they go further to explain. So I got this far. But the explanation that they have isn't division. And I brought it to my other math teacher and so 
I'm convinced that's the, their explanation is wrong. Does that make sense? As much as it could make sense? Yeah. Do you see their explanation? So their answer, I think, is z over was it z over y plus one? Uh, x equals in parentheses z plus y, or x equals z slash y plus one. Yeah. So like, so I. That's this is this is mathematically correct. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know what the or is and why they go, they, they go further to an or because this is mathematically correct. This is the way we would teach it. Okay, I think that you would really just need to go here. And, okay, did you understand this? This. Yeah. Did anyone have any questions? You sure. Don't call you wrong. Okay. Any other questions on any other problems? There was, if you guys know how to do 39, that should be a problem. That was on another test that I saw. That's just straight math. Which one? It's on page 20, it's 39. Oh. It's just straight math. So 34 times. Page 39? It's on uh, 39, page 20. So it's 34 times 67. It's just distributive property. I just want to make sure that you know distributive property. You know distributive property? Just saying it's big. So what's the answer? It's one, right? Nope. It's not one? I thought it was two. I put two. It is two, but do you know how to do, you know how to do it? No. No. Why no, is it two? Why is it two? Because, so, that's why I want it, that's why it, it, look, it, it is easy, but if you don't know how to do the distributive property, then it's not easy. Okay, I have to pick a color so the camera guy can see it. Uh, so they're asking for what's not equal, okay? Not the important part. So it's 34, right? Was it 58? Plus nine. Plus nine, okay. So same thing that we just did, distributed property. You're distributing the 34. Two times up by 58 and nine. Yeah, so you're gonna multiply this times this, which I don't know what the answer is. You wouldn't add the 58 plus the nine first. That's what I thought, just in parentheses. Yeah, wouldn't you add the 58 and the nine first and then multiply it? Uh, you can, okay. because that, but that's one of the answers. So the way I would do it is I would distribute it first. I'm just showing you a distributive property because it's one of the properties that I've seen now. So do you guys want to do this? Yes, you, you can do, what's 58 plus nine? 67. So it's 67, so that's also something else you can do. Because look what they did, they said which is not equal to. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so that's one of them. So there's a few. Yeah, there's a few ways that you can do this because it said which one is it not. So what's what's 34 and 58? Yeah, so this is multiply. So it would be 34 times 58. 1972. Yeah. Plus what's 34 times nine? So there's only one wrong answer? 306. Yeah. So this is that. This is that. This is that. This is that. Right. And it would have been um, 58, 34 plus 9. So that's so why it's wrong. Equal to, then it, would be number one or something. it would have been, yeah. Mm -hmm. So or the I reason mean, it why it's four, but that's why I love it. Right. The reason why, well, 34 plus 9 is what? 
43. So it's 43, and if you did 58 times 43, what would you get? 24.94. Say it again? 24.94. And what's the answer to this? Is it? 2278. 2278, yeah. So that doesn't equal that. So this equals the same thing. So this would be 2278. I'm pretty sure it should be. So this is correct. That's correct. This is correct. That's not correct. But you're still doing what the way you guys did it is all correct. You're distributing the numbers. So you guys do know what you're doing. You guys remember how many um, how much is in a triangle? What the angles are in a triangle? How many? 180. 180 degrees in a triangle. 180 degrees in a triangle. Okay. So what they did in this one for 45 the negative the minus two is not supposed to be there this is wrong as well yeah i was looking at it. i yeah. couldn't tell if it was raised to the exponent i, I couldn't tell it was confused. i wasn't sure either so if it's if it's 10 with the exponent then yeah, 10 with the negative two so let's instead of looking for the answer in the book let's do that because it wouldn't be 10 minus two yeah, I, I said there was no answer for that one because I wasn't sure if it was a, an exponent, but an exponent would be a small little two. So the one he's looking at is 5.93 times 10, and it says minus two, but I, it probably is that, okay? Um, so does everyone know exponents? I'm gonna go over it, don't answer. This is 10. Times 10. Times 10. Okay? And um, you don't even have to do all 10 times 10. You just look at the number. That's how many zeros you have. Okay? This could be like a 4. That would be 1, 2, 3, 4. You don't even have to do the math. Okay? So if I had an 8 here, You don't have to do any math. Okay. So if this is a two, you know this is five point nine three times a hundred. You're moving the decimal place two times. You don't even have to do the math. If you're multiplying, are you going bigger or smaller? Rabbits multiply, we get more of them. Bigger? So your decimal is going that way. How many places? Two. Here's your new number. Good? Did I go too fast? Was, that, was there an answer on there? Yeah. yeah. So it probably was an exponent. Mm -hmm. Is it a negative Yeah, I just took a whole college course today, you know, and I have behind. I just did this type of math. Okay, so if it's negative two? So then it would be like one over a hundred. Yeah. Again, mental math. If it's negative two, you're going the other way. Because it's negative. So it's like dividing. If it's positive, you're going that way. Did I just throw you off? Please look. Okay. So um, positive, I don't think you're going to, I don't know if you're going to have anything like that. Positive, you're making it bigger. So if it's negative two, 
just think about you're basically turning this 10 into almost like a, um, a decimal. So this is a negative 2. So what would be my next number instead of 100? It would be so you're basically, you're basically taking, so that's that negative 2. Right. Just think of this having two zeros, but you're going this way. So that's 1, 2. Is that right? One, two. It's like you're dividing because you're going negatively. So when you're going positive, you're going up. When you're going negative, you're going back. It's like when you have a number line. Here's zero. Positive is this way. No matter what, even if you start here, positive still goes that way. No matter what, negative goes that way. No matter where you start. Because negative just means you have less. No, yes. Kind of. You can ask. That's what I'm here for. I was just curious, like, it would, it would be just, it would just it would cancel itself out. Like, you know, I know it's 10 times 10 when it's but, a 2, but if it's a negative, what would you do? Like, instead of just moving this, well, I had no idea what I was doing. It would be 10 minus 10 or something. So, 0. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying when it's, there's no negative to, it's just 10 times 10. But it did say. Would 10 times, wouldn't that be positive? It would have to be a negative, but 10 would have to be negative. If it's raised right. to exponent, that's where the fraction comes in. Right, right. I just confused myself. I'm sorry, well, I, went, I lost you. I was just saying, if it was, uh, it was just a two, I know it would be ten times ten. Ten times ten. But since it's a negative, I don't know what it would be. I don't think you're gonna see anything like that. Either. But negative it's almost like you're you're going into um uh, like fractions, like what you said. Yeah. And fractions are decimals. So you're going backwards. I wouldn't don't get hung up on it. Um, I'll talk to you after this. Okay. Um, any other ones? I have a whole list, but are there any other ones that you guys simplifying fractions? I think one of you had asked the other day, which was 61. We never got to it. And that's on page 27. I mean, yeah, I didn't tell you it was uh, nope. Five. It is five, and basically what a percentage is always out of a hundred. Right? So let me put my glasses on so I know I'm writing the right thing. So, 0.2 percent. So this is not, so point two would be, this one got me. This is two tenths, right? So when you're doing point, huh? How am I writing that to a thousand? Yeah, because what happens is now you're doing it out of a out of hundred, right? So point, 20%, right, is actually, this is where it gets confusing, 0.20% is actually um, 0 0.002. Because it's not 2%, right? 2% is this. This is 2%, right? It's not 20%. Right? So you're moving the decimal point over one more to the thousandths. Does that make sense? Because so 
is that. And that's 2 over 100, right? So you're moving it over one more place, you're adding a 0. Does that make sense? A little bit? In the simplest way I could possibly think to explain it? Did you see what I did? Yeah, does it make sense? So percent is always out of 100. So 2% equals 2 over 100, which we don't have. We have 0.2%. So you have to actually move the decimal over and add a zero. Remember, you're adding zeros when you go into fractions. So we're just adding a zero here to move the decimal over. You're going one more space, one more zero. Glazed over look, kind of, a little bit. So every time you move the decimal point, so here's, here's a whole number, right? Every time you move the decimal this way, you're basically adding a zero on here. If I were to go one more place, If I were to go one more place, this number keeps getting smaller and smaller. This is a fraction. Do you, you understand? So this is, a, this is a fraction of a number. 0.2% is a fraction of a percent. OK? So if you have 0.2%, 2% is starting at 100. 0.2 is now at 1,000. And if you had to simplify this, what would you simplify 2 by? 2. 2. What you do to the top, you do to the bottom. 1,000 divided by 2. I don't know a simpler way to explain this, it's just that when you're working with um, decimals, decimals to fractions are basically um, every time you move a spot, you add a, pla a decimal place. So every time your fraction gets bigger, your decimal place gets bigger, which means that it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay. Patterns? Anybody have issues with patterns? There was another one I saw. Anybody see anything in here? What do they want you to do first? Six and two. Double it every number. That was uh, 62? Yeah, that's right. Four, nine. I just want you to double the number every time. How about 58 on page 26? That's a good answer. You did it? Yeah. You have it? What did you get for it? I got three. You got number three? Yeah. That's not what I got. And the driver. So here's the vehicle and the driver. So that's five dollars, right? And then you have fifty cents per passenger. So right. It's one fifty. So why is it not three? Four. How many people? Yeah. yeah but isn't it, isn't it driver, driver. 
be considered by someone in Jerusalem. I put five at first, yeah. and then, <laughs> and then I, the driver is still a person. Yeah. Is there an answer key? Yeah. So the way they did it was X equals three, three passengers plus one driver for a total of four people. I yeah I added the car as a person. And then I went back and took the car off as a person. So it's four people. Seventy. I gave you guys the formula for perimeter. I didn't give you. Do you know the formula for perimeter? Side plus side plus side plus side. I'm going to give you a sheet. So the perimeter of a rectangle, rectangular house, is 25 and a half yards, and the length is 22 feet. What's the width? So they're giving you the perimeter, and they're giving you the length. How do you find that? You're going to figure out how many feet are there, okay? Okay. So how do I do this? even if we do two length times width, right? Or we could do side plus side, whichever is easier for you guys. Which way is easier for you guys? The side plus side plus side plus side? Yeah. Okay. So we know that Length is 22 feet, so we have 22 plus 22 plus side plus side, which would equal 2s, right? Or I could leave it side plus side. Okay. So now what are we now? How much do we have? 
So this is 44. And what's that perimeter? 75 and a half people, 25 and 30 yards. So this is 25 and a third, right? Now I'm going to. Well, some chops, something. But the problem is that one's yards. in yards and one's in feet. Yes, thank you. One is in yards and one is in feet. Because this is so small. So this is yards. And this is in feet, right? Yeah. Good. Thank you for noticing that. So this is where the conversion <laughs> is attracted. So this is big. This is actually bigger, even though it's smaller. So what's my conversion? Twelve feet. Here. There's uh, there's twelve feet. No, is that right? twelve yeah. inches in one foot, and there's three feet in one yard. Right? Did you say that before? Yeah. I thought I heard that. So there's 76 feet here? No, I mean 25 times 3. Oh, 76? Okay. That's what I started at. Okay. Yeah, so there's 76. So subtract something. What do I subtract? You're not. Okay. From both sides? Yes, yeah, what you do to one side. Look, you learned something. Yay. Mm -hmm. You're not sleeping. Oh. Oh. You're supposed to answer. I'm just saying that because that's That's a variable. So by two. Yep, because the variable wants to be alone. Two. 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 Sixteen. Sixteen is one. You guys are burnt out? It's a lot. It's a long time you guys are here. So sixteen is one side. Which would be what? Right so one side would be 16 feet. I don't have that one circled, so. Yeah, yeah, 16 feet. So did you see how we got it? You were right. You said subtract something. You should be proud of yourself. And you're tired. See, now is when I should give you one of my easy sheets and see how fertile you guys really are. I wish I could take, I wish you guys could see the video of what you guys all look like. Such a hmm? Guys, you're doing really well. You worked all day, or whatever you did all school. I don't know what you guys are doing, but if I took a picture of you and showed you, you look like you want to choke me. Nope. You guys don't have, you guys, you know, I'm, I'm here to help you. So. Let me know what you need help on. Um, do you want to get up and stretch? Move? Yeah. You don't have to ask. Do it. It's hot in here. <laughs> oh, millimeters to liters. I told you this, but you weren't here. And you weren't here, so I don't know if the other teacher told you this, and I don't know if I told you this. And I forgot your name, so. Um, Ronnie's nephew. Uh, I'm going to tell you this again because here's number, what is it? 57. Milliliters to liters on 57. I say King Henry, I know you guys are probably so sick of hearing this, but King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. 
Okay. So it's kilo, hecto, deca, this is meter, liter, deci, centi, milli. This is another one I saw on the Ohio one. Okay, conversion. So I know it's annoying and I keep saying it, but it's King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. And what does this mean? So if you're going from milliliters to liters, so let's say you're at you're at one liter, one liter. You're here, okay? Your decimal point's here, right? You're going one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One thousand milliliters in one. Okay. So if you said how many hectometers, which they don't usually use that, or how many kilos, there's no math involved. You don't have to remember much. How many meters in centimeters? You're at three. How many meters in centimeters? You go one, two. that easy. And that's why I keep being annoying with it and telling you because there's no math involved. It's mental. King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Okay? So that one is on 57. What'd you guys get for it? Or can you do it? It's two, right? Two. So we just need it. Easy? charts, the cyclists. Um, okay, well then I'm going to give you one. Area. I'm not giving you the formula. This is 56. This is 29 centimeters. What's the area? See you Thursday. That's fifty six centimeters over like this? Fifty six and twenty nine. If you guys aren't going to talk to me, I'm going to make stuff up. I'm going to force you guys to talk to me. paper here if you guys need it. Have you heard it? Just do 
you sign this by two? I'm not telling you because you don't want to talk to me. I got I said one, shift. I got, I got 170. I don't know. No. At times 56, two times, and 29 times. So. Areas length times width. That'll do it. So that's just straight um, computation. This one? Or this one? Length times width. Length, width. You can use calculator. You're, you're not, I don't know, I just. Tell me. I, I added 29, 29, am I not doing that first? No, that's perimeter. I asked for area. Yeah, so just don't so be here. So use I, was, your I, was doing, I was doing 58 times 112 or whatever, so it's not, it's 56 times 29. Yeah, an area is also the, in here. You're putting a tile floor down. So if they say they want to put a fence around something or they're building a, a, a garden around something, that's area. If they're saying they're putting like a tile floor, that's area. Or they're putting a rug down. Straight multiplication. I got four for the seven. Shush. Oh, you did? Me too. No, you did not. Let me yeah, see. Yeah, I did. I got it. See you later. Thank you. So, Thank I, you. I think I did it right. We're going, guys. Let me see. I'm going to go check, come around and check it. Well, I didn't put it in my book. I was straight calculator. Yep. It's not straight calculator work. Actually, I, I put that straight in my calculator. Uh, okay. Smart kids. <laughs> See you later. You know you're free, but I'm just doing this because you guys yep, are here yep. and I don't want to make you sit and do nothing, right? Which one? Yeah, okay. So, four. um. Just four. Four. I think four. 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 Which two was you trying to give me? This one and this one, right? And these are the answers? Uh, the ones, you can take that one, take them off. Games two. Did you do the second one? And then I'll let you go, I promise. The second one? Yeah, I, I did it. Oh my god. Well. Always means times. Was it 24 over 1 though? Yeah. Like yep, 24 is over 1. Of always means times. You could simplify it, or it would have been 24 over 6. I'm sorry. So 24 over 6? Yeah, if you didn't simplify it and you multiply straight across, you can simplify, it would have been 24 over 6. And keep breaking it down. Which uh, divide 24, 6 into 24. It'll be 24 divided by 6. Four. Yep, 4. So now here I simplified it. What's 1 times 4? Four? 4. 4. Four. Hey. What's 1? Oh, I did it again. What's 1 times 1? One? 1. 1. Same thing. But the reason why I showed you this is because of always means times. 
So you don't multiply straight across one times four after you break it down. So yep. So if you multiply straight across, four one. It's four one. Sometimes um, people just multiply straight across and they get 24 over 6. Yeah. So instead of simplifying. Here's your. Uh, Thank you. So just put it right there. So. So we change this to times. So it'll be 1 times 24. They don't simplify. Let's say you don't simplify. You're going to get the same answer. That's why I'm showing you. What's 6 times 1? Six. Right. Okay. So let's hope I answer. So six games won. Thirty-six games played. What if I asked you for the ratio of games won, won to played? What's the number for games won? Six. Six. What's games played? Six. That's it. Uh -huh. So let me erase this. Did you understand the area? Yeah, just on top of Yeah, okay. Now that I erased it and I don't remember the numbers. No, it's fine. Okay. So one is six and played is 36, right? Now watch. Can you simplify those numbers? Six. One and six. One and six. So it's just almost like a, a fraction, but it's not really a fraction. So you could simplify by six and have one over six. They can give you either answer. Maybe one over six over six? It'd be, well, it's not one over six, so it's, it's one game to six play. Okay. Or it could be six to 36. They can give you either answer and they're both correct. Okay? But I asked you, what's the uh, games one to games tied? So one is what number? Six. Six to tied. Eight. Eight. I could still simplify that. By what number? Two. Two. So by two, by two, six divided by two? Three. Yep. So this would be three. Three, oh yeah, three to four. I just wanted to show you that because they could, they could show you that and then have an answer like this. And you'll be like, what the hell are they talking about? The two would be that line in the middle. Like two. two, yeah. So ratio is either uh, three to four, three, two, four, or three, two, four. They all mean the same thing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Keep going. One more. Did I lose you? I was Okay. Um, what do you have trouble with? And I'll think of something. to be on because I don't know if you can use calculator to do that. There's a trick to do this. Do you remember it? No, but you just reminded me of something. So something is that is on the test that is fractions. So you're going to keep this, you're going to change this, and you're going to flip this. Okay? So you keep this one, change this to multiplication, and you flip this. Just go straight across. Then you can just go straight across, or you can simplify whatever makes it easier for you. 
So right here, you have you can simplify this, make it easier, or just multiply across, which is four times six is what? Four. Four times six. Four times six. Twenty-four. Yeah. And then eight times three. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Yeah. A num the same number. This one. It really looks harder than it is. But one thing that I did see, I wanted to show you this real quick, and then I promise I'll let you go. Or you just you can just walk out while I'm talking. It's fine. Is fractions with unlike denominators. And I'll just do an easy one. That was I did see on the Ohio one. So. On, yeah, but with unlike, you can't just you can't just add those. So you have to find a denominator that's the same. Am I throwing away too much stuff? No. Okay. So um, they have to be the same. So since you have to, what number would be the same? Four. Four. Two. Keep the three four, but you have to change. The yeah, two is too low. You have to go bigger. Yeah, so you keep the 4, and then you want to make this a 4, because 2 goes into 4. You, you probably have bigger numbers, but I wanted to give you something easy. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you're adding, right? And because you're adding two different fractions, the bottoms are different, you're not allowed to do that in math. So I tried to pick easier numbers to show you. So this 2, you say, OK, well, 2 goes into 4, so we're going to pick 4 as my denominator. right? What do I multiply 2 by to get to 4 times 2? Does that make sense? Okay. So whatever I do on the bottom, I have to do on top. So 1 times 2 is 2. Okay. And then you can add because everything is the same. So you just add your top numbers. Five. And then the bottom number, you, you don't add. You just bring it down. Well, yeah, you, five over four. If I, were to, if I had um, to take how many? Four out of five. One, right? You have one whole. So I basically, if I did this, because this is a division line, yeah. how many times does 4 go into 5? Yes. Ringing your bell? Sparking any memories? Yeah, it sounds about A little bit? Well, if you come back, I'll do it again. I'll show you again, but um, okay. they're, they're, it'll be easy numbers. It's not going to be anything overly, like, if it's on there. But I remember seeing, like I said, I saw it on the Ohio one, so I remember I wanted to show you guys. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay? Like, completely, like, that's it.